round tables, state by state, <clears throat> excuse me, it's been just terrific to be able to get our DAISY coordinators together, people who have a real uh, firsthand knowledge of how to make the program successful, to be able to learn from each other and share ideas. So we are thrilled to have you all together. I also want to mention how grateful we are to you. This program happens because of DAISY coordinators who bring your passion and your creativity and your resourcefulness to recognizing, honoring, celebrating extraordinary compassionate care. And so it is, we are here to thank you for everything you do to make DAISY successful. We know that it's not easy these days to find the time to do it right, but you are working hard to make this program uh, and meaningful recognition for your nurses really happen. So we thank you all for that. And I can't wait to hear from our speaking um, programs today to hear about the great creativity and uh, success you've been having. So thank you all for everything you do and welcome to the Massachusetts DAISY Coordinator Roundtable. Thank you so much, Bonnie. Now I would like to introduce my co-host for today, Laura Inamorati. Laura is the staff specialist and DAISY coordinator for Massachusetts General Hospital. They have been partnered with DAISY since 2020. Thank you so much, Laura. Thanks, London. Um, it's really great to be here. This is my first round table to be part of, so I'm excited as well. Hopefully the technology piece goes good, right? Um, and I believe I will be introducing the next speaker. Um, London, do you have those slides? Perfect. Um, <clears throat> so Carrie Davis is going to be our first speaker. And um, she is the Director of Nursing Excellence at Leahy Hospitals and Medical Center. They've been part of the DAISY program since 2009. And so I'm really excited for Carrie to be able to share some of her best practices. Take it away, Carrie. Good afternoon, everyone, and good morning to those out um, on the West Coast. Thank you so much for having me here today. Um, I am going to uh, share my screen and also hope the technology works. All right, so you should just be able to see my slides? Correct. Awesome, thank you so much. Um, so I'm Carrie Davis, I'm our Director of Nursing Excellence here at Leahy and also our Magnet Program Director. So uh, lots of fun and Daisy's been very supportive of our Magnet uh, Program, lots of stories about them in our document. Uh, so my goals here for today were how do you collect nominations at your ambulatory clinics and how do you present and continually celebrate your honorees? Uh, so I'd like to start off, um, I'm really excited that Bonnie is on the call today. Um, I had the opportunity to meet Bonnie here just a couple of weeks ago at the 2023 Magnet Conference. So um, thank you for this opportunity and it was a pleasure meeting you, um, Bonnie. My pleasure. Yeah. Uh, just a little bit about Leahy Hospital and Medical Center. Um, we are in Burlington and Peabody, Massachusetts. We are multi-campus. Uh, we are a 345 bed academic medical center, uh, level one trauma. We have 25 operating rooms, greater than 50 ambulatory clinics spread throughout um, Burlington, Lexington, Peabody, Linfield, and all across um, Massachusetts. Uh, we're a DNV comprehensive stroke center, a heart care center, uh, National Distinction of Excellence. We recently received a Gold Beacon Award in our Neurosciences Critical Care Unit, and we have a magnet site visit upcoming in January of 2024. So lots of fun and exciting things um, on our horizon. So a little bit about collecting nominations. Um, as I mentioned, our ambulatory clinics are spread throughout uh, Massachusetts, um, and we really had to educate our community. What is DAISY? Um, because when you think of, oh, there it is. Um, when you think of DAISY, do you think of sour cream? Do you think the bouquet of DAISYs? And how do we get our community really to think about um, the DAISY Award and nominating our nurses? Uh, so in order to educate our community, we did a few different things. Um, some of our units within our organization, and we're hoping more and more, 
uh, send nomination forms home right in our discharge folders. And this was all started by our unit-based practice councils. Uh, they really got excited when one of their nurses um, was honored with an award. So they started trying to figure out how more nurses could be honored. So it was all unit-based practice council driven that they ended up sending home um, patients with these nomination forms. Um, so our transplant and hemo clinic are some of our biggest winners, and they're the ones that religiously make sure that there's a, a form in every single discharge folder. Um, our units and clinics have DAISY flyers up, and I'll show you those flyers uh, on the next slide. Our transplant clinic even has a board that tell us how you're doing. Um, they have cards and things like right there to, uh, for patients to write how they're doing in post, and they also have nomination forms. So if that patient's like, you know, I really did have a great stay, or I really did enjoy, you know, my clinic visit, um, they're able to have access not only to a form, but to a card. We like give them all the materials so that they can do it. And it's in the waiting room too. So especially when you're waiting for a provider or waiting to schedule your next appointment, it's right there for ease of access. Um, our communications team uses Facebook um, and LinkedIn, and I actually run our nursing Instagram page. So we're able to communicate uh, on a lot of different social media platforms. Um, we invite family to the award ceremony to facilitate word of mouth education. Uh, and they are invited both in person if they'd like to come or we send them a Zoom link um, so they can you know, join from wherever they are. And it's really great for patients that have gone back to work and things like that. They can jump on the Zoom for 10 minutes and, and be able to be a part of our ceremony. Uh, in one of our recent celebrations over the summer, um, uh, the family member that was joining actually had all of her work colleagues join too. So that was a pretty special um, moment. Um, a lot of our leaders round on select patients, like five to 10% of patients per day. We are obviously trying to get that higher in the 65 to 70s, but that's what time allows for right now. Um, and during those rounds, one of the questions is um, they ask if there's anyone they would like to recognize. So um, we get some prompting right there that if it's a really great story, the manager will actually submit the nomination on the patient's behalf. Uh, we also have a PEDALS award um, for ancillary services. So anyone that's mentioned in the nomination is recognized. A lot of times uh, it is a team effort out on the floor. We, we really feel that healthcare is a team sport and we really feel that designations, you know, are organizational in nature to achieve like beacon, like magnet. And so we wanted to make sure we could also recognize those ancillary team members um, that made an impact. So we do have a pedals award as well that um, goes along with it. Uh, and our DAISY banner hangs in the winning department, prompting further patient curiosity. Um, the banner is currently hanging in our HEMONC department, and we have received seven nominations in the last couple of weeks since that banner has been hanging just from our HEMONC patients. So really fun and exciting. Um, all nominations are sent to the same location for all departments, decreasing patient confusion. So it doesn't matter if you're an ambulatory clinic out in Peabody and Linfield and Burlington and Lexington, um, whether you fill out the QR code, the address on the form is all the same. It's all the same in the discharge paper. The electronic form goes the same place. Um, colleagues can nominate another colleague. So it's all coming to currently one person. It's all coming to me at the moment. And it's um, that way everybody can uh, still not be confused on where that nomination goes. And even if they do send it to somebody else or an admin within our organization, they'll also get it over to me so that we decrease any patient confusion. Um, when we actually present the award, we do have um, a spreadsheet that we use for every single award. You can see at the top, it says name, date, time. This also allows us to make sure that we follow the same script for all of our honorees, that we follow the same um, uh, like process for getting them recognized, and that at the end of the year, we're able to go back and have a, a list of everything. Um, some of the key pieces that I want to highlight are um, we, as a committee, do all of this ourselves. Like there's four of us in the committee and we divide up all of these things. Um, we do have uh, just the CNO's admin who will print the award certificate for us um, to get our, our CNO signature. But other than that, this is all of our committee's um, work. We do a lot of this right during the committee meeting so that it's not anything extra. It's an hour month that you can don't um, designate to recognition and celebration. And it's sort of one of those lift up meetings during a day. Um, the other things that we do that are key pieces for us is so for this month, we'll you know copy the um, copy this forward to another spreadsheet, 
and I'll actually put that the banner should be in Hemonk so that I can find the banner for the next award. That, that's our tricky point is remembering where we left the banners. We've actually ordered a bunch extra to have on hand, but um, that's that's our tricky point is finding that. Um, I'm gonna show you too on our next slide. We include our photos in all different venues of things, um, which I'll mention in just a moment. And um, we also have an internal and external website that we make sure it all gets on. So we all do this together. Everybody's mm -hmm. able to do every function. Um, and this is really our tracker for making sure we stay on task with all of our, our um, honorees. <clears throat> uh, we also create a script. So no matter who is presenting, uh, anyone is able to follow the same script and able to you know, feel comfortable and confident presenting. Um, sometimes we have a family member that might wanna present their nomination. So we give them a script as well. So they know exactly where they're going and can, um, can feel uh, just a part of the ceremony as well. Um, so that is that part. Um, everything we do is templated out. Even if we're sending a thank you for submission, we've got a template email. Um, and even when our honoree is chosen, we've got a template email. Um, everything we do, uh, we wanna make sure that we're consistent and, and confident in all of the different things we're doing. So um, I think we have literally te uh, 25 templates in our drive. So we're never guessing at what's the next step. All of our order sheets to order cinnamon buns, to order flowers, to do anything that we do, um, we have a template for so that nobody's trying to recreate a wheel. That's our biggest sort of success point and how everything runs smoothly uh, was putting in a lot of that sort of upfront um, work. How do we celebrate our honoree? Um, so during and after the ceremony, um, <clears throat> they get a daisy bouquet during the ceremony, um, a certificate, their photo, Both we do both an individual and a group photo because uh, the award and honoree really we want celebrated together. The whole team has really um, supported the colleague. They get their cinnamon buns. Um, senior leadership does attend. Uh, there's family attendance if, if able. Um, we do present in our nursing news, which is for our nurses, um, our Moments of Excellence newsletter, which you can see I have in the picture here, our Moments of Excellence newsletter. Uh, while that audience is nurses, it tends to get circulated throughout the organization. Um, and the post is our organizational newsletter. Um, our nursing news and our moments of excellence, I actually write our post comes from our communications team and we're constantly in um, communication uh, with our communications team as they take our articles and, and definitely support um, our DAISY honorees. So uh, we really try to live that, um, the recognition and recognizing our nurses through, um, through many different uh, avenues. We have both an internal and external website um, we have a Moments of Excellence TV screen. So when um, people submit nominations for anything, whether it's easy, whether it's awards, um, they can run on our Moments of Excellence TV screen, our patient comments, things like that. Uh, social media, as I mentioned earlier, we put our post out on LinkedIn, Facebook, and our nursing Instagram page. We do have an end of the year celebration for all honorees and various award winners. So um, happens to be December 5th this year. Anybody that's like, graduated, got a scholarship, um, received a Nurses Week award or any of our Circle of Excellence awards or a DAISY honoree, we invite them all to come and continually celebrate because we think it's important that um, we continue to recognize that it's not just one moment of excellence, that your care really has an impact on people's lives. Um, we recently just started our honorees signing a DAISY banner so that we can uh, have all of those you know, that meaningful, like you've done this, you've made the banner and, and here you are. Um, and we will have that banner up for our magnet site visit. So we're trying to get all of our honorees from the last four years to be able to sign it. And then we have a yearly plaque that hangs in the lobby with all of our honorees as well. So we do a lot of different things to continually celebrate our, our team members. Um, and if you'd like to follow us on Instagram, I'd love to have you and you can check out how we, how we celebrate. So thank you. Thanks, Carrie, for um, your awesome presentation. I know that um, there was a couple questions in the chat. Um, Rebecca asked if you would be willing to share the templates that you use with folks, um, some of the scripted templates. And uh, then I, can, I can share almost all of them. I think there's a couple that are 
proprietary, but I think I can share just about all of them. Great. Can I can I ask a question? Actually, or here I am. Uh, Karen, that was great. Oh, that thank was you. really great. I think back on when this program started in 2009, you said, holy smokes. You know, you all were one of our early adopters and have been so wonderful ever since. And I remember so well when Mark and I first came to your hospital and did the first presentation and what, a, what an incredible moment it was for us. One of the things you talked about that we are understanding is more and more important is the acknowledgement that you send to people who write nominations. Okay. Patients and families want to know what happens to the nominations. Yes. We know that it's not only from research we've done in interviewing patients, but also from the number of emails we get saying, what happened to my nomination? They write their heartfelt story and it goes in, sometimes goes into a black hole. So I want to thank you for having a template and making that a priority, letting them know that it was received, that their time that they took made a difference for their nurse and that that nurse received their gratitude. It's so important. We call it closing the loop and we can't thank you enough for making that a priority. No, thank you. And I should mention we have, um, if it's a family, it always, it's always we received your DAISY nomination. Thank you and all the things. Um, if it doesn't quite meet the qualifications of a DAISY award, we still thank them in the same manner and send it to um, potentially like one of our Circle of Excellence Awards, one of our Nurses Week Awards, things like that, because we don't want the nurse to not be recognized either. Um, if it's a colleague who writes it, we, we give them a little bit more information and say, well, this didn't meet a DAISY award. Here's some examples. And we submitted your nomination to um, the Circle of Excellence, Nurses Week, et cetera. But we want the families to continually maintain that, that DAISY is the way to recognize. That's great. And if I can just make this offer to you and to everyone else on the call, if you're doing a year-end celebration and we can send a, a video message from, from me or from our CEO, Deb, that says thank you to all of you, congratulations to all of you for the work you've done, I'm happy to record a special video. Just let me know. Thank you. December 5th. Let me know. I'm here to do it. Hi, Carrie. We had a couple of questions in the chat. So the first one, um, would you be able to share the templates that you use? Is that something that you could share with us? And then about how many honorees do you recognize a year? Um, so yes, I can share my the templates. Um, I think I can share almost all of them. And then uh, we recognize about 18 a year. Uh, if there's a team award and things like that, we do do those as um, one-offs or a leader award. Uh, we do do about about 18 a year. Um, we try for one to two a month. Some months we get so many nominations. Uh, we, you know, we might end up doing three. We did, you know, three one month. We try to ju uh, judge based on a or guide. I shouldn't. I don't like the word judge, but. We try to judge based on the um, quality of the nomination and not just that one person can win. If it meets DAISY criteria and we've already got four for July, we'll bump a couple to August and still present them. Um, so we try to make sure that that we're looking at each award for the, the quality of being a DAISY and not just we got eight great awards this month and we're only giving one. Um, so, you know, some months we don't we don't have an award that meets a DAISY quality and most months we have an abundance. We try to honor everybody. Thank you, Rebecca. Any other questions that anyone has before we move on to our next speaker? How do I get those um, nomination or the not, oh, sorry, how do I get those templates to folks? Will you send email addresses or? Um... London? You can send them directly to me and I'll make sure they get uh, to the correct people. Okay. And then there's lots of wonderful comments in the okay. chat too, Carrie. So <laughs> thank you. Be sure to read those. Thank you. And thank you for the honor of presenting. Then our next um, our next two speakers are Gina St. Jean and Caitlin Patrick. And um, they're the program directors in nursing professional practice and nurse residency and DAISY coordinators at Bay State Medical Center. And that's a mouthful. <laughs> um, they've been participating in the DAISY program since 2019. And i um, looking forward to all the things that you have to share related to DAISY. 
Thank you for having us. Um, let me share my screen. There we go. Okay. Well, thank you so much for having us. This has been a real honor and I am um, so impressed with already what we've learned. Uh, Katie and I are partners in crime, as we like to call ourselves. We run several programs here at Bay State Medical Center, um, the nurse residency, nursing practice. Katie is the magnet director and in charge of our nursing outcomes. So it sort of makes sense that the DAISY program falls under um, our team. So um, we too started out with a, uh, did my slide advance? Sorry, I just want to make sure. Oh, there it goes. So we too started off with a picture with um, Mark and Bonnie. We were also fortunate enough to meet them at the Magnet Conference just a few short weeks ago, but we also were able to sneak in Gene Watson. So I feel like we had an extra surprise. Um, and so in the picture is our chief nurse, um, Joanne Miller, Katie, myself, and our program director for nursing research and um, spiritual services, Sedalia Vital. So really such an honor to meet them and to be able to um, take a quick photo. So a little bit about Bay State Medical Center. We are located in Springfield, Massachusetts. Um, we are the birthplace of basketball and Theodore Geisel, better known as Dr. Seuss. Those are our claims to fame. Uh, with 780 licensed bed, we are the only level one trauma center in Western Mass. We're about an hour and a half away from Boston and we serve a very diverse community. We are a four time consecutive magnet designated organization and very excited and busy working towards magnet number five. So our DAISY award program. So um, how do we present and continually celebrate our honorees? So this is a picture of one of our um, surgical services honorees. And so we do a monthly DAISY honoree. So we do 12 a year. Um, we celebrate with the um, peers on their unit, their nursing leadership, organizational leadership, and the family that submitted the nomination is always invited. We usually try to schedule it around the family's um, schedule as um, they're really kind of the guest of honor along with the awardee. And so the Daisy nurse story is read, followed by the nomination. Our chief nurse usually is the one that starts off by reading or one of the nurse leaders from the unit reading the story of um, the DAISY award and how it came to be. Um, and then usually someone else from the leadership team or the family member, if they're willing to, will read the nomination story. There's usually never a dry eye in the room. Uh, and then we do pictures with the family that nominated the, the person and the fellow nursing team. Um, this picture here is really special. This was actually our most recent DAISY nominee. Um, this is a nurse from our surgical uh, trauma ICU and heart and vascular ICU. And she um, had this gentleman as her patient and he was missing his first grandchild's wedding. So she took it upon herself to facilitate him attending the wedding via Zoom. And not only that, but she brought in um, a uh, shirt and tie stolen from her fiance, who's also in the picture, um, and got him all dressed up, shaven, took care of his hair and made him look presentable and set him up to be a t an attendee via Zoom for the wedding. So he was so thrilled because he was so, so upset about missing the wedding that they wrote the story and just said that um, Hillary had just made such a huge impact in the entire family's lives that he was able to be there at least via Zoom. So this was our most recent story, and we just love the picture of him uh, watching the wedding from, from Zoom and the fact that the family was able to be with him in that way. Um, so our award celebration is led by our chief nurse, Joanne, who explains the story um, this, of the uh, Daisy Award, the Daisy Sculpture, the pin, and the significance of the cinnamon rolls. Um, we do have um, cinnamon rolls, coffee, tea brought to the unit, and we uh, take a little time afterwards to let everybody sort of uh, mingle and um, share their congratulations. This was one of our pediatric ER nurses who received her award. And it was a, a story about a dinosaur. So we love that she was wearing the dinosaur sweatshirt. Um, these are some of our other nominees, um, awardees. Um, the one on the left um, is Jonathan. He is our critical care director presenting one of our uh, medical ICU nurses. 
Um, and the one on the right is Kimberly, who was one of our nurses awarded earlier in the year. So we continue the celebration. Um, one of the biggest things that has been very popular with our celebration is they get to park on campus for a month. And honestly, that's probably the biggest deal we hear about from most people because they really don't like the shuttle. So they get a parking space on campus in the parking garage for a month. Um, we do recognitions on all of our internal and external social media platforms. Uh, the banner outside the entrance to the department is displayed and um, we do a Nurses Week recognition during our award ceremony. We have uh, tables designated just for our uh, DAISY awardees that previous year. Um, we recognize them in our monthly new nursing newsletter called our Nursing News and Views um, and our annual nursing report. And then the managers also lead some internal department celebrations and recognitions within the team. This is just a picture of our um, most recent annual report and how we recognize them within the report. We do a write-up for each one of them. Um, and just a couple last minute things. We just recently started uh, recognizing our nominees, um, which we're very excited about because um, just like Carrie had said, we have some really incredible stories that we do forward on to the next month so that if um, there's a chance to recognize them the next month we do. So we do keep some of those really well well um, worded stories in the in the circulation just because you never know um, who's going to choose what with our committee. So and that's it for us. Katie, anything you want to add? Sure. Thanks, Gina. Um, I did just want to add that we do also have the Daisy leader. And so they were two separate committees um, at one point, but recently as Gina and I took over the uh, clinical nurse DAISY award, we merged those two committees. And so we do the DAISY award monthly and we do the DAISY nurse leader quarterly. Um, and so we do get quite a few nominations, but the committee is, they love reading the stories and they're so happy to participate. So it's really nice. Um, and it's really fun to, to uh, celebrate our leaders as well. So we're glad to be doing both. We're happy to take any questions folks might have. Hi, hey, we did have one question in the chat box that says, do you have a limit oh. on how many times you can move forward a nomination? So, um, yeah, that's a really good question. Um, so we we just took over the, the clinical nurse one. So we haven't run into that scenario yet. But with our nurse leader, um, we've only done it one time. So it was one one quarter. Um, we had a really, really two strong honorees. Um, their stories were off by maybe a point. We do a point scoring system just to when uh, the committee is reading the nominations to make sure that they meet all of their criteria. And it was off by just one. So we saved it for the next quarter and unanimously that one happened to be chosen. So we really only had to move it forward one month, but that's a good um, that's a good question. I think we'd have to talk with the team to decide, you know, moving forward, if we do have one that keeps getting bumped, how often we would do that. And I see in the chat, someone said they do it for about six months. That sounds like a reasonable time frame. So thank you for that. And then who comprises the DAISY committee? It's interdisciplinary. Um, so we have a lot of folks. We have um, child life specialists. We have spiritual services. We have a physician. Um, we have some nurse leaders at different levels, director, manager, nurse educator. Um, we do have some clinical staff from different areas. And I'm trying to think of the other disciplines that we have. Uh, we have someone from patient safety who is very engaged. That might be the majority of our folks. We do have somebody from our PFAC Council, our Patient Family Advisory Council, that sits on it as well. She's very active. So are the celebrations a surprise or are they planned in advance? So they're, um, they're a surprise to the person receiving the award um, and pretty much the majority of the staff on the unit. Really the only people who know about it ahead of time would be Gina and myself. Um, we don't even tell the, the voting committee members, um, but we would make sure that that staff's direct manager or supervisor is aware, um, our CNO, and then our VP um, usually attends the celebration if his schedule allows. Um, so there's a kind of a small group of people who, who know about it. 
And then we come on to the unit and we call a huddle and everybody comes and we read the story and the nomination. So really the person receiving the DAISY award doesn't know that it's them until they start hearing the nomination or recognize the family sitting right there and think, oh geez, I took care of that person. Um, with our nurse leaders, it's a little bit less of a shock factor because once they walk into the room, they they kind of assume, okay, this is for me because they're probably the only leader on the unit. Um, but it's really fun that our our clinical staff don't know until the nomination is read. And then we get a picture of them the moment that they realize it's for them. It's really special. Can you share your point scoring system? We sure can. We'll send it to London to share with everybody. I think that's everything. Did I miss anything? Oh, can you describe how DAISY is used in magnet document? Absolutely. We actually, um, so we are in the process of writing our fifth document. Um, super exciting. We're about, we are due to submit in August. Um, so a little bit after um, our friends from Leahy. And uh, we have written a couple of stories. So um, off the top of my head, I couldn't tell you what SOE it is, but it's about, we wrote how um, a clinical nurse demonstrated our organization's core values. And it was really within the nomination um, that was submitted for this nurse that showed that she really did have all of our values. And so we included that nomination and how she was recognized. And it's a beautifully written magnet story and it's all buttoned up and ready to be submitted. So we're really proud of that. Gary knew exactly which- There you go, she knows. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, you're you're definitely right. <laughs> I'm nine weeks out from site visit. Yeah, you're ready. You're ready to go. Great questions. Well, thank you all. If you have any further questions, um, you have our contact information. We'll share our um, presentation. You can reach out to Gina or myself at any time. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you both so much for sharing really great questions. Um, and I think I am next to present. Uh, so let me share my slides. And feel free to chime in if you have questions along the way. Um, so I work at Mass General Hospital. I too am part of the magnet recognition program. It must be something that syncs up Daisy and Magnet here. Um, and so we are the third oldest general hospital in the U.S. We were incorporated in 1811. Uh, I really like these two pictures because the one on the left shows the original hospital. That's our Bullfinch building. And patients actually used to come to the building by boat, which is really interesting. Um, our entrance has changed over the years. So the picture on the right is our latest entrance to the hospital. Um, it's a Mac, it's an academic medical center, and we have roughly 1,045 licensed beds, 23,000 employees, and around 6,700 registered nurses. <clears throat> so we launched the DAISY Award here at Mass General. We were a little late to the program. Um, we started February 1st of 2020. We had all these grand plans of how we were going to implement the award. And then obviously um, a couple weeks later, everything sort of shut down. So um, we changed things around a bit from our launch and we were lucky enough to have already formed our committee and met one time in person prior to February of 2020. We have 11 DAISY selection committee members. They're all clinical nurses from the inpatient and ambulatory locations throughout our organization. So each member represents a certain department of the hospital, so to speak. Um, since 2020, we've had 82 clinical nurses that have been selected as DAISY honorees. We have had roughly 1,500 nominations, 610 of which were online and 981 were paper. So despite kicking this off during a pandemic, we still receive quite a bit of paper nominations. Of those 1,500 nominations, roughly 1,200 were nominations by patients, families, or visitors. Um, so a majority of our nominations are coming directly from patients and families, which is really great. The image you'll see here on this slide is one of many that we created to sort of summarize what the DAISY Award is. 
some units and clinics have these posted throughout their area to, to give an idea and a one page overview of what the DAISY Award is and where people can nominate a nurse and what the celebrations look like. We um, are really trying to push our electronic nominations to some degree. So over the last couple of years, we realized we wanted to simplify some of our messaging regarding how to nominate nurses. So we created this Thank a Nurse poster. It's, it's a one page flyer that clinics can put in their waiting rooms um, and units can put up in the halls. And it's really just saying, if you have a story that you want to thank a nurse, here's how to do it. Um, and it links directly to the online nomination portal page uh, portal. And then we also created an Excellence Everyday portal page that houses all the information you could ever want to know about Mass General's DAISY program. Um, we also have a dedicated email address for people to email regarding DAISY as well. When we revamped the online portal page, we wanted to really keep in mind we service a lot of communities that English isn't the first language, particularly Chelsea Healthcare. Um, so our online form is both in English and in Spanish. Um, and so we have received a handful of Spanish nominations. One of the nominations was actually a recipient. So that was really wonderful. And we partner with our interpreter services department to get those translated. We also have these big green daisy boxes throughout the organization. Um, they sit in all of the main lobbies and in our main health centers, main lobbies, and then up on the units and clinics. And that's the spot where people can drop off the nomination forms. The 11 daisy committee members are um, assigned different areas in the hospital and they check the boxes monthly and then drop them off in the main lobby box. And we collect those and, and type up all the nominations. As you know, um, all of the people that are nominated receive a pin, so that single daisy pin. And quarterly, we um, take all of the nominations that were submitted and not selected, and we put them in an Excel file, remove patient identifiers, and then print out copies of the nomination stories. And the letter on the left-hand side gets put in this envelope with a pin and sent to the nurse leaders in the departments that people get nominations. So all of the nominees get their letter of nomination. And I think that's the most special part about the award truly is that even if it's a short sentence, people are really getting um, feedback about the things that they do. And oftentimes it's not anything that's like wild and crazy. It's you answered the call bell and you listened to me and you held my hand in a moment of um, turmoil. So it's nice to be able to, to have those things get sent to the units and to the clinics. And we encourage the nursing leaders to read those aloud during huddles to really generate that, that excitement. Um, in regards to the presentations, they are a surprise, as you can tell by these photos. Um, these were some of our uh, Daisy honorees over the years. Our chief nurse, Debbie, who's standing there in the blue, uh, will go to the unit. We have the big banner, and um, typically the nursing directors or the nurse managers are the ones that form the huddle. Um, oftentimes, they tell them it's like the, it's a huddle about the joint commission, and so, so it's a really wonderful surprise when we show up. <laughs> Um, and we try to get our, our leaders that are associated with those areas and members of the selection committee to join as well. Because we kicked this off during COVID, we have an iPad specific for DAISY. So we show up with an iPad that has the family members if they're unable to join in person and the patients um, if they also are unable to join in person that are on the iPad as well. So I'll usually carry the iPad in with a Zoom um, up and running, and then halfway through the presentation, we'll, once the person figures out that they're the honoree, we'll show them the iPad with their family or with the patients. And that's been really great for us because it's hard sometimes for patients to get into the city um, with parking and driving, so they're far more apt to zoom in, I've, I've found. So we do a lot of, um, we try to make our presentations really meaningful. Um, when we first kicked it off during COVID, we, we 
polled the committee and they really felt strongly that they didn't want to pause despite being in that first big surge of of COVID. Um, they thought it was really important to be able to showcase the work that nurses are doing and thank people. So we were creative in our approach um, because we couldn't really gather at the time. So we did some Zoom presentations for the honorees then and um, we mailed out the basket of goodies to like the honorees emergency contact I, I would contact them and mail it out and then during the presentation they'd pull it out of a closet and say oh here's this here's the healers touch sculpture and and whatnot and then moving forward um we've been able to have gatherings with our group so the banner with the big group is actually revere health center um it was their first daisy honoree last quarter so they were really thrilled to have us be able to get out there and celebrate with them and um, and then the pictures on the right are just some of the family that we've been able to get to join our presentation. Some family members worked at Mass General, some um, joined from, from home. We don't have a Cinnabon near us, so we coordinate with our um, food and nutrition department to make cinnamon rolls. And I was fortunate to be able to be a taste tester in this process. Uh, so we got the perfect role. And um, th these are just the elements that I'm sure you all are aware of that go into the presentations. We have the banner that we have them sign. It's hung on the unit or in the clinic for a couple months. Uh, the certificate, the Healer's Touch Sculpture, and the Special Daisy Award pin. And then to raise awareness, we really kind of put on blast uh, the honorees throughout the quarter. So there is a little bit of a lag doing this quarterly, but um, we tend to award six to eight honorees a quarter. Um, and what happens is I'll put together all their photos and their spotlight links and send it to our public affairs department. And then they'll post on Instagram, on Facebook, um, we highlight the spotlight links that are created by the DAISY program each quarter. Once we've completed the nominations, we'll send an email out to the nursing leadership um, with the who was honored, the spotlight links, and then that's when we sort of highlight, keep an eye out in your mail, you're going to be getting your packets of nominee envelopes and be sure to, to read those out loud to celebrate all the great work that the nurses are doing throughout the, the year. This is a screenshot of our Excellence Everyday Portal page. We have information about the DZ Award, um, how it came about, how to nominate a nurse that has the links right then and there, and anyone can access this. Um, we have uh, all of our DZ honorees and their spotlight links are posted here to date. And then we have a DAISY toolkit for units and clinics. So that's where a lot of those one page posters live. So people can print them right out from wherever they are. And that's the link to our portal page. And then um, this picture I just like to, to explain is, is a really special presentation that we had where a patient had a condition where he was sort of hospitalized periodically to receive treatment. And so we were able to coordinate the presentation when he was in the hospital and and he called the nurse into his room and, and we surprised them in the room. And I think this picture just really showcases the impact that nurses have on patients. You can see it in, in both of their eyes, um, how thankful they are and how special the relationship they both have. So um, it's really important to, to highlight that the impact that nurses have on, on patients is really profound. So I will stop sharing and open it up for any questions. <clears throat> I see that there's one, um, if nurses would like to thank the person who's, nom who's nominated them, what's the process? So um, they can email the DZ Award, MGH DZ Award email address if they'd like to thank the person. And we have a list with all the contact information um, in that form and on the brochure they contact if like select yes or no if you want to be contacted for the presentation. So if the person selected no, then um, we just tell them that that they were nominated anonymously um, just for privacy standards, but we um, can share that information. We haven't really encountered that too much. Um, 
And then is your CNO able to attend all the ceremonies, even those held at regional campuses? Yes. So um, Debbie attends every single presentation. Um, so we really coordinate with her schedule. We had trips from the main campus to Revere, to Chelsea, to Waltham, to Danvers. Um, so it's been an interesting journey <laughs> trying to get her there, but uh, <laughs> but it, it it's really welcomed. And I think it's really important for staff at our satellite locations to see that visibility. Um, they appreciate it for sure. Any other questions? Thank you so much, Laura, for your presentation. We are going to stop recording for a second and we're going to move on uh, to the